If you ever want to experience an alien world, then look no further than the world's oceans. It was a giant leap for mankind to walk along the moon, but walking on the ocean floor will take us to the very limits of what's possible. At 1,814 meters in length, the Barsetian Jetty is among the longest in the world. Even so, you would need to seek two such jetties end to end to reach the ocean's floor, which is still only a third of the way to the very bottom of the Mariana Trench. For every 10 meters we descend, pressure increases by one bar, the equivalent of an atmosphere of pressure, or what we experience at sea level. This means that if we were to tip the jetty onto its end and stand at the bottom, then we'd be experiencing 180 bar of pressure. This is the equivalent of me holding an 150 ton blue whale in the palm of my hand. This pressure acts on all points in your body, pushing them inwards. Solids and liquids can handle the squeeze, but air cavities get shrunk. The air inside my helmet is kept at high pressure. This allows my lungs to expand and also stops my ears from exploding. As we descend deeper and deeper, and pressures increase, then we so too need to increase the pressure inside the helmet. Gases dissolve in liquids, which is how fish can breathe oxygen while remaining underwater. The amount of gas which can be dissolved is proportional to the pressure of that gas. Higher pressure means more gas can be dissolved. This is known as Henry's Law. In order to illustrate how this can be a problem for divers, I've brought with me this bottle of soft drink, into which is dissolved about 50 litres of carbon dioxide. It's kept in solution due to extreme pressure, about 80 bar of it. However, if we release it suddenly, then it all escapes into a fountain of sugar and bubbles. Now imagine that, but in your blood. High pressure nitrogen in the air which divers breathe readily dissolves into the bloodstream, coming out if they ascend too quickly. It accumulates around the joints, which is why decompression sickness is often called the bends. Even on the way down, high pressure gases will still kill you, in particular through nitrogen narcosis and oxygen toxicity, both of which can knock you out by the time you reach 100 meters. This is because our bodies just weren't designed to deal with extreme concentrations of these gases inside our bloodstream. In order to counteract this, divers going to extreme depths will replace these gases with something like helium. While all gases will eventually kill you, some take much greater pressures to do so. Technical divers use nitrox, heliox and other exotic mixtures to work on deep sea infrastructure. Even so, the farthest we've been able to reach is 330 meters. All of these problems stem from using high pressure air. So what if we remove the need for air entirely? That's the idea behind liquid breathing, an experimental and in some ways terrifying new form of respiration. As featured in James Cameron's The Abyss, liquid breathing uses a special family of molecules known as perfluorocarbons, which possess just the right structure to dissolve large quantities of oxygen. The blood vessels within your lungs can't tell the difference between oxygen held in the air with oxygen held in perfluorocarbon, and will take it in just as readily. The technology works so well that the rat seen in the movie uses a real-life rodent, which is breathing in a perfluorocarbon mixture. The humans, however, were acting. Perfluorocarbons are much more viscous than air, which means that a special type of respirator is needed to push the liquid in and out of your lungs. While delivering oxygen has been pretty successful, it's much harder to remove carbon dioxide. On top of that, from the limited human trials we've conducted, the whole experience feels like drowning. As pressures increase further and further, our very cells start to betray us. In 2013, the Ugly Animal Preservation Society voted the blobfish as the world's ugliest animal. However, I think they're being a little bit unfair. The blobfish, or Cycrotus mastodus, are a species of fish living off the Australian coast in depths of up to 1.2 kilometers. Down here, they don't look nearly as bad. This fish, just like all life on Earth, is made up of cells which contain a cell membrane. This allows nutrients, waste, and signaling molecules to be transported. At high pressure, the lipids which make up this membrane become much more stiff, preventing transport from occurring. To counteract this, the blobfish uses much softer lipids, akin to substituting butter for vegetable oil. Combined with extreme pressure, 
the resulting rigidity is perfect for life in the abyss. Unfortunately, when we humans bring these fish up to the surface, the low pressure reveals their soft, gelatinous foundation. With our human cells optimized to operate at pressures of one atmosphere, as we descend deeper and deeper and pressures increase, the lipids which make up our cell membranes become so rigid that they cease to function correctly. After one kilometer, blackouts and death ensue. Until we turn into human-shaped blobfish, this is the hard limit on how deep we can dive. Walking along the ocean's floor makes us face new challenges, both in engineering as well as in our very biology. For now, the ocean steps lay firmly out of reach. This has been James Dingley from the Atomic Frontier. Keep looking up.